<laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fro Show. My name is Frank Menken, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host Joe Murray. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, welcome <laughs> so back. It gets awkward, more awkward every week. I feel Sorry. like we should make it our goal to make it as awkward as we possibly can. If I'm completely Maybe. honest with you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> next week. Next Wait, let's, week. no, no. Let's let's do it again. Okay. Okay. Right. right. Um, we're gonna keep all this. We're gonna, just we're just rolling it back. Okay. All right. Okay. Go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the Fro Show. Uh, yeah. I'm your host, Frank Menken. Uh, hey, Frank. And this is my co-host, Joe Murray. Yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Um, okay, so oh, no. yeah, we took a week off over over Easter um, mm. so that we could, you know, do our stuff, spend time with our families um, over Zoom, obviously, um, because yeah. uh, we can't go anywhere. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, Joe, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, the first question is you're recording video as well, aren't you? I am. All right. Perfect. Um, the second question is, do you want to talk about everything that is going on in your, like with your background and everything (laughs) that's happened? Because I am incredibly intrigued. Yes. Um, well, this is actually, this is also what I was doing last weekend. Um, Mm -hmm. this is my new studio. Right. Which is actually uh, now in half of the garage. Oh, okay. So pretty much what we've done is we've built two walls. So it takes up almost the whole half. So there's that wall and then a car can fit on the other side. Mm-hmm. And then there's a wall just here and there's like a little bit of area on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's and you're soundproofing much. it and everything? It's nearly soundproof. Um, it was a very much a budget build. So mm. it's not, it's never ever probably going to be soundproof without a bunch of money in it. But yeah, um, like these pads and stuff on the back here, that's for, to make it sound nicer in here and to, uh, that's to stop like the first reflections from the speakers. Yeah. And it's a really cool way that you actually do that. So you find whoever's going to be in here the most, which was me, I was sitting in where I wanted to be the sweet spot. So I'd set up my monitors. So Um, I was sort of the same distance from each monitor and they were the same distance from each other. So it was like a little Mm -hmm. equilateral triangle. Yeah. And then we, someone went around the walls with a mirror, right? Mm -hmm. And whenever I saw a monitor, that's where the sound was going to bounce off the wall and come back to me. So we put, we put like these pads here. So that would stop or mostly stop the reflection off the wall. So now I know that I'm hearing, um, I'm not, I'm not hearing, you know, a sum of all these reflection of reflections off the walls. I'm just hearing what's coming out of the speakers. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's I'm really not, cool. I can't really like move my camera around now, but like there's some behind the speakers. There's mm. a big one on the roof or the ceiling. There's some over there. So yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So my next question is, how big is the space? Uh, it's. Bigger than where I was before. Yeah. It's not huge though. I've I managed to find a free uh double seater couch Ooh, that was on nice. Facebook Marketplace. Nice, um, nice. And it's sitting here behind me and there's a bit of room between me and the couch still. I've got a massive desk and there's still a bunch of room. Could probably get a drum kit in here with my like control room set up in this yeah. corner. If he took the catch out, you could probably get a decent sized drum kit. So, yeah. Okay, so it's my, a nice my, size. My follow up question to all of these questions is: <laughs> um, Should we rehome the podcast? Rehome post quarantine. Ah, uh, well, that was um, one of the reasons for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what's going on. So yeah, because I feel like a I feel like a couch set up with some. What was it? What, is it, what was it? What was it? Oh, we yeah. about? the SM sevens. What were they? SM7, the short oh, ones? The, oh, the microphones, SM7Bs. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. That, could be, that could be nice though. and cash. Yeah. I'd be down for that. Mm-hmm. We might we might have to talk about talk about moving the podcast, making we an actual might. set. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That'd be real nice, actually. Interesting. Um, but you're enjoying your new studio and everything? I am. So it's still, it's still got bits and pieces to go. Not all my stuff's in here yet, but mm. most of it's here. And, uh, it's nice to have your own space, isn't it? It is really nice. Like and an it's, actual studio. Yeah. And it's like, that's exactly what it was for. Um, mm. 
and it's uh, set up to the way I like it and things like that. So it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I, in, like I, I guess yeah. during the build, we found some kind of interesting items. So oh. I'm just going to reach over here. Okay. He's reaching over. He's, his head's half of a, out of frame. You can see his little so man bun. It's very this is kind of, yeah. Yeah. This is kind of just a follow on from the tech episode. Was that oh, last time? Oh, the, no, that was the week before. Yeah. The so ASMR you, retro tech. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. Frank had a lots of really cool film stuff and pictures and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I guess today I have my own little show and tell. Okay. I'm very excited. I'm very ready. Of some sound things. I'm glad so we're this, recording this episode then. I have this little box. <gasps> Ooh. Does he know what it is? Do I know what it is? It is a sound tape. It is. Very it's much like one. my film reels. It is. So would would they be played alongside the film reel then? Well, these ones, no. Well, they got to be played on a separate player. Oh, they're like the the big boy ones that like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like one of these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like one of those. One I prepared earlier. <gasps> That's so I'm cool. Turn that down a bit more. Okay, so I feel like I should describe what I'm looking at. It is a big briefcase looking motherfucker. Um, <laughs> it with is a, a wheel. Briefcase. Yeah, it looks, it's about the size of like a guitar amp. Um, mm -hmm. And it has a lot of plugs and buttons and knobs. Um, and it looks like I really want to play with it and press every single button. <laughs> yeah. It's super nice. It's like, it's one of the sort of consumer level ones back in the day. Yeah. Um, so this is the one you carry onto the train with you? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> this is your like carry on? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, it's like one of the ones that would sit in your home at, you know, I don't know what, when it's from, probably the 50s. Right. Yeah. But it's really cool. It mostly still works. It has just some cool sounds. I like that. But I definitely, I heard that, that click. Ooh. It turns Ooh. and stuff. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to play with that post-quarantine. Yeah, you know that. I'm going to press um, all the buttons. So, yeah, we still got to get that fixed. <laughs> what, so need fi what needs fixing? Uh, so, it's only one channel works at the moment, so it's mono. Right. Um, but, like, the speaker's in either side of it. So, it pretty much, it's all does built it, in. Does yeah. it not take headphones or is it, like... Uh, you can plug other speakers in it. It actually came came with other speakers. So it has speakers that are like... So does that work or will it, would it still be mono? The speakers work, but right. yeah, it would still be mono. That needs to be fixed. Um, right. So that's just an issue with the actual yeah. like electronics. Yeah. Right. Um, and the other thing is it doesn't record at the moment, oh. but it is set up to record. So I'll definitely be getting that fixed and trying out some really cool tape sounds well that'll so. be very expensive as well i assume yeah like, buying like sound tape yeah is that the I, correct word for it sound tape because i literally know nothing about this uh well i'm pretty much in a similar boat at the moment <laughs> oh okay um yeah reel to reel it just says sound tape on the box so oh i'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a fat google real quick yeah do it um i th i did a quick google and um this tape machine is cheaper than the tape apparently ah, these days that's always fun yeah um i cannot find any for sale yeah interesting so i don't really? i don't know if they make these little ones anymore they'd probably still make mm. the studio ones which are really big um, right but there's heaps of old recordings what they used to do with these back in the day is they would like record things onto them this is like before phones mm. um and then they would mail them to whoever and they would listen them back to listen to them back on their recorder and it's like having mm -hmm. a conversation it's like writing <laughs> letters but it's like with sound uh-huh so it's like yeah. a really slow phone call basically yeah kind of interesting it's pretty much writing a letter to someone except you hear like the letters talking to you not um, right i like that that's actually yeah. really sweet um i just had a look um i think it's about the same size the one quarter inch seven inch reel is 47 dollars yeah. australian yeah. Yeah, Which, I think like, that's his size. Isn't bad. It's pretty. No. It's like it's eh. It's doable. But I think so. I think I read someone bought the same or a similar one mm. for about fifty bucks, like the ah. the player. Right. So it's not by no means like studio quality, but 
Yeah, but still like, be you real know, nice to you, test out. Yeah, but sometimes you don't want that studio quality sound. Yeah, that's true. You want that analog, that like raw, mm, buzzy and buzzy just... yucky sound. Yeah, sometimes yeah. that's the vibe you're going for. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. Speaking of like studios, I feel like I should kind of talk about mine now. Oh yeah, you like had we... a uh, new addition to your. Well, I've never actually talked about my studio at all, um, especially considering oh, that the ca- no, and the oh. cameras only actually show one half of my studio. Huh. Um, so. I have, if, if you're watching the video, you can see a little bit of it. Oh, that's weird. My hand's mirrored. Um, <laughs> you can see a little bit of it behind me. Um, but I've got like a pretty large room, which uh, is mm. essentially multi-purpose. So on one side of the room, I have a massive wooden table, which is my desk. Um, and I have three monitors on it with my computer and everything. And I just added a new monitor. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But mm-hmm. um, that's the one that we repurposed for the podcast where I take all the monitors off and we leave one uh, with our notes. Um, and then our recording stuff goes on there. So that's what you see uh, on the podcast. On the other side of the room is my like photography studio, which is like my big sheet. I've got um, my lights. I have all my stuff. I have like all my random shit, like little props and like um, all that sort of thing. And then behind me, this 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 rack behind me isn't all for show. Um, most of these cameras I use regularly. Um, so like this one, uh, this one here is my <laughs> like main daily driver. And then that's my medium format, the Bronick. I've talked about these cameras before. But that's like, so nice, that camera. I use most of these cameras regularly. Um, and so my... Studio split into that two different spaces of like my workspace and my video space and then my photography space. Mm. Um, so outside of doing the podcast, I'm obviously a photographer, but my yeah. work at the moment is not as a photographer. My work at the moment is technically as a video editor, um, which mm. is like a whole other thing that I do that I very rarely talk about because it's like not, I don't, I don't really think that that's my main thing. Like mm. I can get by with my video editing, but I'm not at all the best video editor and I don't like talk about it a lot. So I like making films and I like editing and I like doing all that sort of thing. But like I am by no means the next Steven Spielberg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I saw one you made the other day. It looked really cool. Did you? Did I, oh, did I send you, you one made for one. work? The animated yeah. one? It right. looked like it was, yeah. I actually yeah. thought it was like really professional. It looked really cool. Yeah. Like that's the sort of stuff that I do. Um, but because I was getting more and more into that and especially working from home, um, it's kind of gotten to a point where I was like running out of space on my monitors, um, which Mm. was really, really becoming an issue very quickly. Um, because I would have to be switching tabs because I'd have like my script and I'd have, um, my task that I have to actually be doing for the video and that sort of thing. So it became really difficult to manage everything and I was losing time switching between windows constantly. Mm. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm upgrading my computer anyway. I'm just going to add another monitor to this setup. Yeah. And man, it is the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> it Do is you ever my... find you have too much room? No. Really? It, it's, it's a case of like, you don't realize what you're missing until you, until you do it. Uh, and right. the second you add that third monitor, you, like, it, you, you will always find a use for it. It is the most useful thing I've ever done. Obviously, there's times where it's not being used because like, if I'm not working and I'm just like have a YouTube video or something, I'm just like watching a movie or something, I'm not going to be doing stuff on the other screens. I'm going to be focused mm. on the middle one. But like, for what we're doing now, it's perfect because I have like our Zoom call in the middle monitor. I have my audio recorder on my left monitor so I can monitor all my levels and stuff. And then on the right side, I have my notes and all the stuff that I want to talk about and all my links open. So it's like, it's this perfect little ecosystem wow. of my stuff and what I need. Yeah. Um, but going back to the reason I actually did it in the first place, for video editing, when I edit, I have... Um, so the way that Premiere is kind of split up, my editing program, Premiere Pro, is split up, is that you get your main monitor, which is your center monitor, mm-hmm. um, or your main display, Um, and usually you have to switch tabs to get into all the different settings. So there's a tab for effects, there's a tab for audio, there's a tab for color grading, there is a tab for assembling your footage, there is a tab for editing and cutting your footage. Like it's all these different tabs. Mm -hmm. I get really sick of that and I don't like (laughs) switching tabs because I feel like it's slowing me down, um, especially because it takes a second to switch tabs uh, and takes time to reload into that new tab. 
Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of one of those people that's like, my workflow needs to be really sharp um, and I need to like minimize the amount of time that I'm wasting um, because I want to get so much done. Mm. Um, so what I ended up doing when I had two monitors was I'd have my main display with my timeline down the bottom and then I'd have just um, my clip in the middle. So I could see it, I could press play, I could pause, I'd have like my media browser and all my tools. So I had all that there. And on my right monitor, I had literally everything else like set out. <laughs> So yeah, I had yeah. like my audio, I had my effects manager, I had um, my color grading panel. Everything was laid out on my second monitor. Jeez. So I would, so I would never, never have to switch. I could always just go to my second monitor, grab an effect, grab this, grab whatever I need, and it'd be sweet. I would have no issues. Hmm. Um, the issue that comes with that though is that yes, my workflow is a lot faster. Except now I'm spending time alt tabbing back to like my scripts that I can look at. Um, look at where my animations go or oh, I'm all tapping right. back to my, ta uh, back to my task to see what I'm actually supposed to be doing. So it's mm. like that extra layer of like, yes, I've fixed an issue in premiere, but I've now added another issue where I'm alt tabbing. So I'm losing time again hmm. with the third monitor. I've completely erased both of those issues and it's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> 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 um, but it's been, it's been great. It's been so, so good. Um, mm. And I love it. it yeah. I, my middle monitor as well um, is, and I have no idea if this, I'm probably going to have to explain this, but my middle monitor is 144 hertz, um, which is so uh, yeah. much better. Okay, do you want me I to don't know. Okay, I'll talk about it. I'll talk I about don't it. I'm know so why excited. that is different from any other monitor. Okay. <laughs> so, currently, um, I'm not sure what the actual standard is, um, but... Um, how monitors are set up is in um, hertz, which is essentially the frame rate of um, of your monitor. Hmm. So like a cinema screen runs at 24 hertz, essentially, because it runs at 24 frames per second. Right. Now, a normal monitor, um, a casual monitor that, it, like, that you would probably be using now runs at 60 hertz, yeah. uh, which means that 60 times a second, it is refreshing your display. Huh. Um and that's how you can see things move. That's how you see things change. That's how video works. That's how everything that you see changes is 60 times every single second your monitor is going, okay, new information, new information, new information, new information. Oh, there you go. The more your hertz go, it is literally your monitor adding more refreshes per second. So I've right. now gone from 60 refreshes a second to 144 refreshes a second, which means yeah. that I can now watch... Um, 60 frame per second video. I can watch 144 frame per second video, which um, it, if it was at real time, obviously, because 144 frames per second would be slow-mo, mm -hmm. um, just slightly. Um, but where you really start noticing it is in like dragging things and moving things. At 144 hertz, everything moves really, really smoothly and you don't get that like jitter of moving stuff All right. um, and like that ghosting effect. Mm. Um and it's really good. I would really recommend, especially for video editors and stuff, that you get um, a high refresh rate, high refresh rate monitor um, that's color accurate and a uh, high resolution. I haven't got a high resolution one um, because I didn't want to buy one and I didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> but that'll be the next thing when I when I get another monitor. It'll be a 4K one. Oh um, wow! Because this one's just 1080. Yeah. Just right. 1080. <laughs> yeah. Just like in very large air quotes. Yeah. How, um, much, how much is like 4K? Oh, or how available is 4K to, I guess, consumers or normal consumers? Oh, 4K consumers? is absolutely available. Um, it is it is totally totally within reach. Um, I'm just a lazy asshole who didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> uh, mostly, and the only reason I, I haven't is because, um, is because I don't shoot 4K. I don't, um, I shoot in 1080. Um, right. Just because my camera doesn't support 4K. Uh, um, so I have no need for a 4K monitor because I'm never going to use the functionality that it gives me. Mm -hmm. However, um, the next camera that I'm getting shoots 4K and 8K. Um, so I'm oh, going geez. to need to upgrade. <laughs> 8K, what the heck? Um, yes. But the issue is that um, you can b basically, in the world of monitors, you can pick one. You can pick 4K or you can pick a high refresh rate. You cannot have both. If you have both, it is going to be incredibly expensive. Right. Um, so my 144 hertz monitor was 400 uh, Australian, 
Um, this 4K monitor that I'm looking at, which is the exact same size as the one that I currently have, is $500. Mm. Um, and if I look up 4K monitor, 144 hertz, um, the cheapest one that I can find is $1,500. Holy moly. Yeah, so it's like that immediate trade-off of you can have one of the two, but you cannot have both mm. uh, unless you want to pay a rather exorbitant price. Yeah, right. Um, on that though, when while I'm still talking about like video editing and that sort of thing, hmm. on the on the note of um, efficiency and like time and that sort of thing, um, yeah. I've done a whole new thing with my editing workflow, um, which is very strange. And I can show you quickly. Hmm. Um, is that I have oh, my main keyboard here, right? My blue one. Yeah. Hello. Um, <laughs> and I have my second keyboard and my Doritos over there. Um, oh, yes, my Doritos. second keyboard there. So first keyboard, second keyboard. Wait, so why do you need two keyboards? Exactly. So I would like you to see if you can figure out why I would possibly ever have a need for a second keyboard. Uh, is like one set up for specifically one monitor somehow? No. Um, it involves a little bit of basic programming. Oh. Yeah. Is, oh, you wait, you haven't like, one's just for shortcuts or something. Yeah, That's right. exactly what it is. That, that is, is exactly so cool. what it is. I um, I have configured my second keyboard to be entirely for shortcuts in Premiere Pro. That so, is awesome. Um, my numpad on my second keyboard opens applications. So one opens Premiere Pro, two opens FileMaker, three opens Chrome, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and then I have all the like complicated keyboard shortcuts in Premiere Pro. Like a lot of them, because there's so much to do in Premiere Pro, a lot of them will use like Control Shift K or Control Alt T or whatever it is. Yeah. And I've just I've just made them one button. So Control Shift K is now just K on my second keyboard. That's it. Done. Wow. Um, and I've also added some things that just aren't functions in Premiere Pro. Mm. Um, things like locking layers. Um, because in Premiere Pro, is. yeah, I'm about to explain it. Okay. <laughs> um, because in Premiere Pro, um, you there's there's this thing called ripple editing, which is basically that um, when you put a cut in your clip and you go forward, if you press Q, it's just going to delete everything bef- like after the cut and before the playhead. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's basically like just highlighting something and deleting it, but you don't have to highlight it. You can just press play and then press Q, and it'll delete everything up until that cut. Um, the issue is that that cuts everything below that clip and above that clip as well. Uh, So if I'm editing just the clip and I don't want it to touch the audio at all, for example, if I'm editing a music video or something, mm -hmm. I have to lock that music layer to make sure that it doesn't cut that music layer. It just cuts the video layer. Right. The issue is that that involves using my mouse and clicking um, like two times, which is a loss in time. That's slow. Mm. Um, there is a function in Premiere to lock all layers. There is not a function in Premiere to lock specific layers, which is what I want. Yeah. So, and usually the layers where I want to lock is either the uh, first video track or the first audio track. So, Mm -hmm. what I've done is because my placement on the monitor will never, ever, ever change, Mm. I just have... Um, two buttons on my keyboard that move my mouse to one specific location, click, and then move back to where it was. Um, and those locations are the two lock buttons that lock the video track and the audio track. Oh, so wow. it's just all these little things that make my life a whole lot easier. Mm. Um, yeah, but yeah wow. that's like, my, I've just been trying to optimize my workflow in Premiere, mm. which isn't as much of an issue in like things like Lightroom and Photoshop because I find that they're much better. There's just less in those programs than there is in Premiere. Premiere just has so much mm. potential yeah. um, and options that it just kind of becomes overwhelming at some point. Yeah, right. But yeah. That might be something I have to look at for Pro Tools. Oh, yeah. I can definitely run you through it. It's like super, super helpful. Mm. Would yeah. definitely recommend. Well, it's because I use like I use Pro Tools and Logic and then sometimes like their shortcuts aren't the same. So... Right, between the two. Yeah, so maybe if I can program it so one's the same as the other or something. Right. Um, or, most, or applica- most of those applications will have um, like a shortcuts menu where you can actually change the shortcuts. Yeah, that's true. I hadn't actually thought about that. 
Yeah. So like Premiere, I can change all the shortcuts to do whatever I want them to, mm. which is very, very helpful when I'm doing auto hotkey scripts because then I can just, I can just make it a really insane shortcut and it'll just work. Yeah. So like for the control shift K function that I was talking about before, mm. instead of making it directly control shift K on the second keyboard, I can just make it like control shift alt A K P or whatever it is. Mm. Um, just to make sure that I never accidentally press it on my first keyboard, right. um, which just makes my life a whole lot easier. Mm. But yeah, that is very cool. But yeah, it's it's very very fun. Yeah, especially with like a new studio. I'm really excited to see your studio actually, like yeah. properly. I'm really excited for it to be finished. It's mm. so nice. Like I really like it now, but I cannot wait for it to be finished. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. Mm. The door needs work. The door. It's ah. Oh, so that door, it's like a barn door, so mm-hmm. it slides, and oh. it's like super heavy. Can we paint it? Yeah, I think I will. I think I'm gonna like paint it darker, so it's more, right? Yeah, like rustic. Fair right enough. Hmm. But I guess the reason why it looks like this, I said it was a budget build, and all of this was free, pretty much. Oh, how'd you get it free? So where Dad works, they get heaps of like offcuts of timber. Oh, and right. we pretty much just took what they weren't going to use and built this. Oh, well, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the frames aren't free, but... Yeah, but like the wood is, which is really like the main part. Yeah, a lot of it is. It would have been much more expensive than, you know, yes. if we hadn't got the free stuff. It was probably, you know, a couple hundred dollars for the mm. whole thing. You could also probably get like some cheap carpet and put that on the walls as well. It's like very basic yeah. soundproofing. We bought, I got the carpet. The ground's carpeted now. Right. And that was 50 bucks to do the whole thing. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I actually, yeah, I furnished all of in here for $50. Damn. No, obviously not including all your tech because like... No, but I like I bought that expensive. before. Yeah. So I, um, all, all that I have at the moment I had in the other room. Mm. But yeah. Have you done the maths on all of your like equipment like before i have not and i don't know if i want to <laughs> because i did the maths <laughs> on all my equipment the other day and yeah. i immediately regretted it oh really like, immediately regretted it <laughs> you i just was like, like yeah, yeah yeah oh you do something like that and then you're like imagine how much more money i could i would have in this bank account man it is it's bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like my camera alone uh, that i carry around every day is like five grand which is yeah, just stupid. It's insane. just stupid. And that's not including the laptop I carry around. It's not including the iPad I carry around. Oh, yeah. That's not including like the extra lenses I might have. <laughs> it just like, it really adds up. Yeah. Because I like, I, I when I started catching the train to uni, I was like sitting on the train. I was like, if I got mugged right now, how much money would I be down the drain? Because mm. like, none of this is insured. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> because yeah. all the insurance it's companies charge like for because camera stuff is technically classified as um, commercial goods, it's mm. stupidly stupidly expensive to um, insure camera equipment. Yeah, um, which is really like, frustrating. You'd have to be owning a bunch, like exactly, sort of. which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. Um, yeah. Actually, with with the JobKeeper stuff, it's gotten a lot better. Um, yeah. With all this stuff in Australia, yeah, like my, it's great. I obviously don't want to say, I'll tell you like actual numbers after the podcast because I don't yeah. want to like be on the podcast and be like, this is how much money I make. But like, <laughs> it's gotten better with like everything that's been going on, um, yeah. especially because I've lost a lot of work, obviously, because I can't yeah. see people, yeah. <laughs> which is which is really rough for a job that requires seeing people. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. So I got unlucky with that, I think, because I, I, ha- I don't do much work in the industry at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I was about to, like I was about to get hired at this place. Oh. And then, yeah, I, I like, they were, we were lining up a, um, uh, what was it? Ah, uh, a shift that, like, like a trial shift. shift. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. A trial shift. Um, and then pretty much that week they had to close. It was a live venue. Oh. And then they emailed me back saying, sorry, we didn't get back to you, but, would you like to do it when we reopen? <laughs> oh, no. But, yeah. I've so. also heard that they're not reopening. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Oh, what the heck? Yeah. I didn't hear that. This is, we're, we're talking about the same one. This is the one on, this is the street one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that they're not reopening. Um, I, I heard from a friend of mine who's very like close with the owners that's like, they 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 can't because it costs so much to run that every weekend. They don't actually mm. make that much profit on it. All oh, right. Um. So they're not really they 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 might come back, but uh, there you go. I wish you luck. Um, yeah. And I really hope they reopen. Well, I don't know. I don't, it's interesting to see how many other things will reopen as well. Mm. How many other live venues will reopen? Yeah. It'll. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's gonna be interesting. I, I yeah. got the refund emails for all of my like concerts and stuff last week and it made me so oh. sad. <laughs> it was just like, bing, you've been refunded. Bing, you've been refunded. I, was like, I don't <laughs> no. want it. Yeah. Uh, it's really depressing. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I got, yeah. It was, it was so many as well. It was like five or six gigs that I had booked. Mm. It was just like all in a week. It was like, ding, ding. I, like, I really yeah. wanted to go to these. Yeah. And it was I was like, actually... It was like um, a comedian that I've been wanting to see for like years as well. It's um, oh. Luke Kidgel. He's an Australian comedian. Oh, Incredible yeah. guy. His podcast is fucking hilarious. Luke and Lewis. <laughs> um, shout out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've listened to a bit of that. That is cool. Uh, yeah. I was going to go see his show um, that was coming to Brisbane in like April. Man. Guess not. It's no. fine. Yeah, I had a, I had a few like um, things on my phone I'd saved to my calendar for like in my... Yeah. In my calendar of gigs and stuff that I was going to go to, and one popped up the other day. It's like starting in 10 minutes. It's like, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm at home <laughs> in my pajamas. Yeah. I've been wearing so. sweatpants all day for the yeah. past like two weeks. Oath. It's getting bad. <laughs> hey, you want, do you want to hear? I'm going to share a secret with the podcast. It's, a very, it's a very secret secret. Do you want to know how, what it is? It depends how secret it is. That's pretty secret. Okay, yeah. I no one no one else knows because no one's come into this room yet. So this is an exclusive for the podcast. Oh. You ready? Yeah. Ready? I'm going to whisper it into the microphone. Okay. Ooh, I bumped it. <laughs> I'm not wearing any pants. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's my secret for the podcast. <laughs> um, I have no reason to wear pants in my own home. <laughs> so <laughs> doing the podcast with underwear and a shirt on. <laughs> the heck you know i just but thought i'd share <laughs> just thought it'd be a bit thought it'd be fun for the podcast you know yeah all right <laughs> I, I look professional from the waist up <laughs> i actually don't i'm wearing a i'm literally wearing a bar shirt i actually probably shouldn't be wearing this <laughs> <laughs> i just realized what shirt i'm wearing oh um, no it's free ad free advertising for them if it shows up on the podcast it's my favorite bar in brisbane uh. um uh, I, I kind of want to shout them out because I really like them. Should I shout them out? Well, they're closed. They'd be closed as well. Oh, shit. They? They're closed. Yeah, I'm definitely going to shout them out. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Brisbane kids, um, if you live in Brisbane, once all this shit blows over, go visit Netherworld in Fortitude Valley. It is the greatest bar that I've ever been to. They have classic arcade machines, the best fucking drinks in town, and they have a vegan menu, which is great for someone that cannot eat red meat because they throw up. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's great. Would recommend. Um, I might mm. see you there if, if you come to Netherworld in, in Fortitude Valley. Yes. But yeah, this is such a sick shirt. Hang on. I'm going to move the mic so you can see it. Oh, we are seeing it now. Oh, yeah. I've seen that shirt. Yeah, it is nice. I love it. It's such a cool shirt. Mm -hmm. It's currently covered in dog hair though, which is Ugh. a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh okay um i want to talk about something that i discovered this week um that yes. legitimately blew my mind okay mm -hmm. um so this is like a film film thing let me see if i can open this in a new tab so it doesn't okay so um i found this this week it is from the mission impossible movie the latest one i think um which one? Yeah. What's it called? It is called, uh, I think it's in what the name, a Fallout from Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, now, I don't like Trump, Tom Cruise as an actor. This is not me liking Tom Cruise. What? Uh, I will. <laughs> I, I really like don't Tom like Cruise. him. Uh, he just gives me bad vibes, man. Really? Um, so, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see it. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is a scene from um, Mission Impossible Fallout. It has another, so the, it's, it's following the cameraman that filmed this scene. Um, I'm oh, just yep. going to play the clip and then I'm going to talk about it because 
This clip blows my fucking mind. Okay, you ready? Mm. Wait, there's, what? There's no sound. You're just going to have to watch. Um, for the audio listeners, it's the scene from um, Mission Impossible Fallout where Tom Cruise is about to go do the halo jump. Um, there is a cameraman with a red camera strapped to his head. He has a follow focus in his left hand um, and he's shooting Tom Cruise as he's running out and he's doing the halo jump with him. So he's backing out of the plane and he's just backed out and he's what? following Tom Cruise all the way down, doing everything himself with the camera on his head, focusing on Tom Cruise. It is absolutely insane. How? What the heck? Okay, that's the end. Um, what? It is the most insane video clip I have ever seen. Um, so, obviously, I did more research because <laughs> I cannot see something like that and not know every single thing about it, okay? So, mm. from what I read about this scene, right, he didn't have a viewfinder. This guy what? was literally doing what? this from the top of his head. So, I was actually going to ask that question. Like, oh. How would you be able to see? <laughs> he couldn't. Okay, so in addition <laughs> to the all... Heck? So they did a bunch of practice jumps in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, right? While yeah. practicing for this film. Um, so <laughs> in addition to all the jumps they did in Abu Dhabi, they constructed the largest skydiving fan ever so they could practice camera movements and spent about six months doing that in England. It what? was done entirely on the cameraman remembering the spatial relationships during the jump between what? him and Tom Cruise. And they had a few inches of wiggle room to hit the focus marks. Oh How my fucking goodness. mental is that? That is insane. Absolutely crazy. What? Um, so this guy, I literally practiced for six months. This guy has the red camera strapped to his head and he has the follow focus in his hand, focusing, oh, jumping yeah. out of a fucking plane, doing <laughs> like a backwards. halo jump, which is the, yeah, doing it back. He's literally doing exactly what Tom Cruise does in the film with a like 40 pound camera on his head and a follow focus. <laughs> oh my goodness. It Actually, is insane. Yeah. I didn't even think about the focus as well. You have to, yeah. you have to, Oh, and there's what? another camera guy filming the camera guy filming Tom Cruise, which is <laughs> yeah. also a whole nother level. Um, but oh, I have man. a couple pictures of the um, of the the the, the, the camera. Um, so I'm just going to put it into its own window so that you guys can't. How heavy would that camera been as well? Man, I do not even want to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so these are the two oh, images that I have. Um, let me see if I can share it with you. Um, I kind of would like to share it without any of my personal information. Would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, I'm just going to do it like this. So, um, this is what you can I just can't believe, see. like, even just jumping out of a plane backwards. Yeah, so this is the camera. What? Yeah, and then that's it. So, th they had the viewfinder at first, Um which you can see down here, mm. didn't have it for the final shoot because they found that when he was jumping, it kept poking him in the eye. Oh. <laughs> um, so they took it off and he just did it based off memory. So here you can see all the focus rigs. Yeah. Um, so that's that's his aperture and that's his focus. Um, or it might be the other way around. I'm not entirely sure with that lens. Um, but it's usually focus. Um, no, aperture focus. It's technically T-stop on these cameras. Um, mm. But I'll talk about that in a second. But, man, it is so cool. So, so cool. This wow. man deserves all the props in the world. Yeah. Absolutely wow. incredible. Um, yeah, I saw that and I knew that I had to share it because... Boy, <laughs> boy. That is insane. <laughs> Blows Just... my mind. Every time I see that clip, I'm like amazed every single time. Yeah. It's iconic. Just like the, the pink shorts, boom, my, boom, my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, here, uh, Christo his name's Christopher... M oh, no. Sorry, no, no, his name's not. This is not him. Um, but uh, the he did the jump because he was po he was pulling focus using thumbsticks completely by feel with no reference with the camera strapped to his head. It's wild what this guy accomplished. Man. it's it <clears throat> Can you see, like, any missed focuses or anything no, like that? No, it's, it's, like, focus perfect. It is 100% perfect. There is no issues. I was even um, just thinking, like, when he was falling and then Tom Cruise got closer... Like he probably wouldn't have known that it was going to happen. Oh, mm. he was going to get that close. Like he probably couldn't predict that how no. close he was going to get on the fall. Okay, so this is this is the actual information. So it's a twenty-four millimeter lens. 
um, and was almost wide open due to the available light because it was kind of dark. So it was like a really wide open aperture. Mm. Um, the skydiver had a wooden f- camera focus adjustment in his hand with a lemo cable running down his arm. At the start of the shot, when they both fall out of the plane, he pulls from infinity to close focus and back out again. He focus pulled the whole sequence with just that thing in his hand. He has almost he has he also sorry he also had almost no idea of how it was framed until afterwards. He had a small circle piece of glass over his eye attached to his helmet that we tried to line up to what the lens sees before each jump as a makeshift viewfinder. My goodness, man! Wow. Oh, this sorry. Um, this this guy is was actually involved in the film. This guy. Oh, that really? Added this comment. Yeah, I just read that again. He said, um. He says, uh, we, we tried to. Oh. Man. Huh. This is the actual dude. Hectic. <laughs> that's really cool. I like that. Um, oh, but yeah. That's insane. Such a cool scene. Just goes to show that like some camera operators are absolutely mental. Mm. The shit that they will do to get the shot is stupid. Yeah, nah. I, w- I don't think I could ever jump out of a plane, let alone backwards. I reckon you could. No, thanks. <laughs> you get it. If I kicked you, you'd be fine. It'd oh, be sweet. Yeah, but wouldn't even be I an wouldn't issue. Go, I wouldn't go up in the plane with you. Oh, yeah. No, that's probably a smart <laughs> idea. It's probably a very good idea, honestly. Yeah. Man. Oh, man. That'd be crazy. That picture gets me every time. Mm-hmm. You're just looking at the picture again? Yeah, sorry. I got distracted <laughs> by the picture. Um, this is why I shouldn't be sitting in front of a computer um, <laughs> during the podcast because I'm just like staring at that picture and like, hmm, I wonder what lens that is. <laughs> oh, man, man, it's so cool. I love I love that sort of stuff, seeing how movies are made and that sort of thing. It is yeah. incredible. So I also saw another one of um, of um, the, I think it's, I can't remember. It's, hang on, let me let me look it up. I don't want to fuck it up because I know if I fuck it up, then people are going to hate me for um, <laughs> it. Just okay. reminds me of that It is one. a Bond film. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the Bond film Octopussy, right? Um, mm. There's a shot from that film where um, he flies a plane through a hangar. Um, and in the final shot, you can see there's a pole sticking up um, out of the ground, holding the plane up, and it's attached to a car driving through the oh. hangar. It is so funny, and I love it so much. <laughs> no. it, is, it makes me so happy every single time. Wait, so uh, you can see that it's like fake. Yeah, hang on, I'm. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Okay, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show it again. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. You ready? This is the scene. Okay, Are you watching? Yeah. Okay. Better be watching. Okay, I'll press play. Oh, it, is it gonna play? I hope it plays. It's such a good scene. Ah. Okay, it's not working. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. It's a bit blocky. But you can, you should still be able to see it. I'll pause it. There's oh. the pole there. <laughs> it is incredible. Oh, hang on. I'll put it on. I'll put it on a high setting. There it goes. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. What the heck? <laughs> okay, wait. Let's go back. Let's go back. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh Man, my goodness. It's so good. It's so good. Oh. That just reminds stuff, me. Yeah. Uh, of like, just like the Harry Potter scene where um, you can see the cameraman in the crowd. You I don't think that? I've seen that. Oh, it's in, um, um, I think it's in the, f- uh, it's in the one where like Harry and uh, Malfoy I'm, I'm, duel on okay, the table. I'm, gonna get a lot of hate for this um but i really don't like harry potter what actually yeah really yeah i think it's one of those i think it's one of those film franchises that isn't actually that good but people just hold on to it because they grew up with it and they think that it's better than it actually is Uh. because i rewatch those movies and they really don't hold up like they hold they hold up if you're nostalgic about it and if you like have your rose tinted glasses on, but like they're not good movies. Ah, oh, I didn't know you felt that way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I I kind of understand that because it's sort of I like I don't know I do like them, but then they're like I don't know they're just not quite as good as they could be. I feel. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, they could be so much better than they actually are, which is just really disappointing, honestly. Yeah. It's because, like all the movies have really good moments, but they just sort of... Sometimes yeah. they just don't work together. I, I also think that's kind of an issue in regards to J.K. Rowling as a writer, because I genuinely don't think she's that great of an author, and I think people put her on a pedestal because they uh, okay. wrote, she wrote her fa- their favorite book. Yeah, right. Because the amount of times that I've heard... Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Joe's just that? pulled up the um Joe's just pulled up the, the cameraman in the in the audience. That's terrible. That's horrible. <laughs> He's right there. Too. That's very that's a very obvious one as well. Yeah. Man. I mean, good for that guy. You know, like his <laughs> his job is forever embalmed into the film. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> We're talking about Harry Potter and how it was right. Yeah, has good moments, but see, I don't think J.K. Rowling. Oh, J.K. Rowling, yeah, actually, it. that good of a writer. She flounders so much in her writing. I just think that, and I get that. The, I get that they're children's books, and I think that's the issue: is that people have held on to these books as if they're not children's books, hmm. and they keep coming back to them as like these are the greatest literary works of all time. It's like no, these these are literally books for twelve year olds, like. These yeah, are books that were written for 12-year-olds to start with and then that grew up with them until they were 18 and that's why you're attached to them because you spent six years <laughs> with these books and movies and now you're obsessed with them and you cannot take your rose-tinted glasses off. It is the exact same thing as with me with Star Wars. I get it. I understand. Yeah, okay. I am yeah. self-aware about this. Star Wars <laughs> movies are not good films uh, in their own right. They were fantastic in the 70s, but if you watch them mm. now, you're going to be like, yeah. I mean, I guess it was fine. Yeah. But like, yeah objectively they're not good films especially like four it's like fun they're all fun but they're yeah. not good films anymore yeah four is uh yeah for, i understand where you're coming from with that one yeah it's uh it's a bit interesting mm. but um yeah that's that's my that's my <laughs> my uh, my input <laughs> little controversial note for the day <laughs> that's that's my spark of controversy actually for today <laughs> that's it i see a foot i see a foot in a the foot. background of your video <laughs> <laughs> that's Alicia's foot. It's my girlfriend's foot. <gasps> she probably shouldn't come in to the. She just said, the... Sorry, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Alicia. Frank says hi. <laughs> she says hi to the podcast. She says hi to the podcast. Welcome sitting, to the podcast, Alicia. She's sitting on the the free couch that I managed to find. Right. Well, she managed to find actually. Good for her. Proud yeah. of her. Alicia's first uh, introduction to the podcast. Yeah, there you go. She'll probably <laughs> pop in a whole lot more, honestly. Yeah. She's, she makes a good habit of it. Yeah. <laughs> Popping up where she's not meant to. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I love her. She's lovely. Um, <laughs> don't tell her I said that. She'll get her head full. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so, I have two games that we can play. Oh, yes. Um, I like games. I think we'll only... Uh, nah, we can probably... We'll do both. Fuck it. We'll do both. Um, so, <laughs> we'll start with this one. Now, we did this one on our emergency episode, um, which has now been uploaded, which is great. Yeah. Which means that people have definitely had an introduction to this game if they watched it. If they haven't listened to that episode, then this is how the game works. I have four mm-hmm. quotes. Um, two of them are artists. Two of them are fascists. I'm going to read the quotes with no context and no... Um, no explanation of who uh, actually said them. Um, and then Joe has to guess whether that was an artist or whether that was a fascist. Um, Do you want so that's how the game works. Fascist again? Fascist, uh, Hitler. Yep. Yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> is that a good enough, good enough that's one? A, that's um, a pretty good explanation. It is a form yeah. of far right authoritarian ultranationalism characterized by dicta- dictatorial power, forcible suppression of opposition, and strong regimentation of society and of the economy, which came to prominence in the early 20th century Europe. That's right. I remember okay. that. Not the book, 1984. Yes, that's the one. Gotcha. Um, okay, so, uh, Joseph, could you please pick quotes, uh, a number between one and four? Three. Three. Okay, perfect. So, Three. this is your first quote. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it is better to live one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep. <laughs> what? I'll read it again. It is better to live one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep. Hmm. Would you like to take your guess? I reckon... Actually, I just want to know, do you think think that's true? 
Do you believe that? It'd that be it's a- better to live one day as a lion than a hundred years as a sheep. Yeah. Um. I mean, I like grass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I don't really want to be either. I'd rather be like a seal or something. That'd be cool. A seal? Yeah. It's not the question. <laughs> it's the question. This is my game. This isn't your game. Um, let's go uh, fascist. Fascist. Is that your final answer? Oh, I thought I got it right. <laughs> yes. You're correct. It is fascist. Yes. <laughs> one point to Joe. Okay. Yes. Uh, one to three. Uh, three again. Okay, three again. Yes. <clears throat> oh, I just highlighted it. Now I can't read it. Okay. Um, I am not like Hitchcock, directing the reaction of the public or the audience. I don't like that. I think this is some kind of fascism. You need to react like that. No, no, it's not like this. Everyone needs to react to react as he can. That seems like artist. Is that your final answer? Yeah. It's fascist. Oh, what? <laughs> really? Sorry. Um, but- I've actually done no research on these people, so um, I just looked up fascist quotes on Google. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping, these people are, I'm hoping these people are fascists, um, but if they're not... Oops, sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> next one. Uh, one or two? One. One, okay. The richness I achieve comes from nature, the source of my inspiration. I'd like to remind you, Hitler started as a painter. Oh. Maybe there should be a both option then. Shit, there should be a both option. <laughs> Fuck, okay. <laughs> Is this a, one of those both options? Uh, no, it's definitely not. Uh, uh, artist. It is artist, you're correct. Yes. Okay, well then the, the last one kind of speaks for itself. Um, to my mind, one does not put oneself in place of the past. One only adds a new link. Fascist? No, artist. Oh, what? That was obvious. There was two artists and two fascists, man. You already had oh, two artists. I didn't, I didn't know that there was two of each. <laughs> I said that when I explained the game. Oh, well, clearly I wasn't listening. Clearly not. It's literally <laughs> your only job. It's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to talk. That's true. You do also have to talk. I know yeah. that's very difficult for you. Yes. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. Next one. <laughs> this is my next one. This oh, yeah. isn't really a game. It's more of a question. Um, so, mm-hmm. this is the question, um, which I would love an answer for because I find it very, very interesting. Okay. Um, okay. If in some cataclysm, so like world-ending event, all mm-hmm. of scientific knowledge were to be destroyed and only one sentence passed on to the next generation of creatures, what statement would contain the most information in the fewest words? So, the whole universe, like, the whole world is fucked, um, where all of humanity is dead, um, and it's just, like, it's a, mm. new, a new race of humans, basically, and they have none of our prior knowledge. If you could say one sentence to, um, to impart some form of knowledge onto them, what would it be? Uh... So for, for reference... Um, what I initially said was, um, because I assume that the, the that they will know this phrase um, from the instance that they are intelligent enough to read it, mm-hmm. um, which means that they'll be at that developmental stage where they'll learn things and not question it, um, and hopefully things will get passed down generationally. So what I thought was, um, sh- very short sentence, fossils are cursed, do not touch, mother nature good. <laughs> Because I'm assuming we're all going to die from the inevitable heat death of climate change. So, yeah, right. That's my assumption. What What would you? What I would have, be your sentence? I have no idea what I would say. You can I don't know if I could sum it up in one sentence. Well, no, no. It doesn't have to be all of humanity. It can just be some information that you find important. Like what the person, the person who, um, who wrote this, his answer is. All things are made of atoms, little particles that move around in perpetual motion, attracting each other when they are a little distance apart, but repelling upon being squeezed into one another. In Within that sentence, you learn how to make fire, you can make atomic bombs, you can make weaponry, you can do basically anything with that sentence. Yeah, that's... Okay. I see. I don't it know, maybe... It entirely depends on how you want to take it. Probably be something about mm, medicine then, maybe. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah. You know, with this whole pandemic. <laughs> yeah, like if the pandemic takes us out, be like, hey, don't fucking touch people. <laughs> maybe just yeah. don't. <laughs> or don't. Maybe search the Amazon first for cures. Because isn't right. there like heaps of that that they haven't looked for and they're saying that there's... I have not like, heard about this. Oh, I don't know. But um, they say that there's hundreds or thousands or crazy amounts of species that we don't even know about mm. living there. Yeah, and that like, I know. We just haven't searched at all or something. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I think. I think I it should think, just be... I don't think we've searched at all. Uh, no, we definitely haven't. Um, no. I think it should just be, hey, how about we don't make shaking hands an integral part of society? <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, that's that's true. But that's like the whole Aussie way. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Okay, so what's your What's your sentence? What's my sentence? Um, What's your sentence? Yeah, it'd be something about searching the... uh, I don't know, man. Don't kill the bees. Don't kill the bees. Fair. Yeah. Are you thinking like something like search every part of the planet before you try to go somewhere else or something like that? Maybe. Is that what you're like getting at? Maybe like... Start uh, exploring sooner. Yeah. Because we didn't start exploring till fucking way late oh like no 1600s yeah really, that's true. is when we actually started exploring yeah that's true like, but that then we is didn't... not long did we have all like the resources to do it anyway no we didn't but if our goal was to explore and not just to survive we would have gotten there much sooner mm. if from like day one we were like shit we need to get on the other side of that ocean we would have figured out how to do shit way faster yeah, that's it's the exact same thing that happened with the space race. Like the only reason we got to space that quickly was because America was like, "Oh fuck, the Russians are going to get there." <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah. So um, you know. Yeah. Well, it'd probably be like search, so uh, explore the Earth with the intent to do good. I don't know. Someone. Like oh, that. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's very sweet. <laughs> um. Now. I, I know, kind of I kind of led you on a little bit. Uh-oh. Um there is a correct answer to this question. Kind oh. of. There is a there is a theor- there is a theoretical correct answer to this question. Um like. I also did not get it. Um I told no. you what I thought what I would have said. Um yeah. what this physicist says is don't say anything. Rip up the piece of paper, throw it away, don't tell them anything. Because uh. and the reason he says this <clears throat> the reason he says this is because everything that we've done up until this point has led us to where we are now, which is the extinction of mankind. Uh-huh. So, by not telling them anything, you're giving them a higher chance of not following the same path that we did and not having the same values as we do. Right. So, you give them a higher chance of survival. Yeah. Which I think makes total sense. Yeah. But is a bit fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's yeah, a very interesting true. question. 100%. That is. I really like it. That's like one of those shower thoughts. Oh, 100%. It's such a good chat, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Those are, those are my two little 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 um, activities for today. <laughs> yeah. I like uh, them. Yeah. Good I really games. like that like sentence, that sentence one. Yeah. Um, I found it very interesting. My dad showed that one to me. Um, he oh, sent right. it to me. It's a very interesting article. Um, I, oh, also, I should probably mention that um, everything that we've talked about, like... Um, the Tom Cruise Halo jump and this the link to this um, uh, sentence article will all be in the in the description for this episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, you had a bunch of stuff you want to talk about as well. We are reaching the end of our episode, but we can probably fit one other thing in. Um, well, the only other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, I'd probably be best to talk about next week. I think. Nah, do it now. It's fine. Do it. Oh, do, it okay. do it. Well, do it, it was it. like how it's a bit more serious. It's okay. kind of like how we're. How are we staying creative when Ooh. we're in isolation? Okay. No, I think this is a good one. I think this is better. Mm. I think, actually, I think this is a really good thing because I think that we should talk about this every week. I think we should like okay. be coming back with like what we've done to stay yeah. creative every week, basically. Yeah. Um, but what right. if, do you want me to answer first or do you want to answer first? Um, well, I'll just mention one thing. I guess I've... Some uh, like this Built is something we were talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How can Sorry, I? Okay. Yeah. Well, that was really fun. Anyway, mm. um, I guess I've been doing mix practicing. 
Mm-hmm. So there's a website Which online. Uh, so there's a website online where you can just download stems, which is just, I guess, a multi-track of audio. So you get, you know, if it's a rock song or something, you yeah. just get your kick drum yeah. snare. Episode two, we talked about it there, I think. Yeah, we talked about stems there. Um, and then you just chuck them in whatever program you mix in. So I use Pro Tools for most of my mixing. Mm. And you pretty much just set all your levels, do all that, and try and get a nice song out of it. And I normally spend an hour doing that. Mm. Um, just try and get as far as I can in an hour. I do that a few times a week. Keeps me creative, I guess. Um, mm. Other than that, I've actually really struggled to be creative during isolation in terms of coming up with my own ideas. Yeah. Um, but now I'm starting to try and like maybe write a song a week or a couple of songs a week or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it is hard. It's really hard. Yeah. The other thing is I think it's completely fine to not... Um, to not do anything yeah. for a little while until you like readjust. Um, yeah. So I took a while, probably two weeks before I actually was like, okay, now I need to start being creative again. Now I know what this sort of lifestyle is like being at home all the time. And yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Hmm. Interesting. How about no, you? I, I've, I've also found it very difficult to stay creative, I guess. Mm. Um, Although I have the advantage of having an inherently creative job. Like my job is yeah. to make videos and make content for um, this company that I work for. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, that that kind of makes it easier for me to stay creative. But on that same note, that's just my job. That's just work, which is creative in some sense, but is not like my own creativity. It's creativity within parameters, which is still creativity. It's just feels lesser to me you know, in some yeah. sense. But um, I've actually been learning how to do uh, VFX and like motion tracking and stuff. Oh yeah, um, which has been re- like really fucking difficult, but really yeah. really interesting. Um, because what I what I didn't realize is how in depth Blender is as a program. Oh, right. um, because I always just assumed it was like a three D modeling program, and that was like it. That was the extent of it. Hmm. But I stumbled across a YouTube video of this guy. Um, who made a sci-fi feature like TV series by himself with just a couple actors and actresses. Hmm. And it looks incredible. Wow. It looks absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, I'll see if I can find it. Oh, here, I've got it. Um, so this here, I'll show you, I'll show you a clip of it. Um, and I'll just skip forward to like where it gets interesting. Um, so this is, this is a show that this guy has literally made in his garage, like in his home. Mm. With nothing but blender and a, like a green screen and a couple lights. So this is this is the clip. What? How it's insane is like, this? It's giving me like Fallout vibes. So I just I'll just stop it there. Um, that is insane. It is crazy, oh, right? Um, yeah. And this guy has put up tutorials on how he has done everything in this um, in his TV show, like on Blender. Um, so Whoa. he literally has shown every single little tiny detail of how he does it. Um, so I've just been going through his tutorials and like learning every like little teeny tiny little bitty things. Huh. Wow. Man, it's crazy. But that's kind of what I've been doing to stay creative. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I've, I've also found it really, really difficult. Um, I've been like re-editing a lot of my old photos, yeah. Um, especially my um, America photos, um, just because they're like, it's like I, it's like so cheesy, but it's like a, uh, a, a like a window to a world before everything. Cause it's like yeah. there's people everywhere and it's busy and it's it's always like bustling. And now you look outside and it's just like empty, which is yeah. just it's it's really depressing. But it is. Yeah. It's kind of just how things have to be for now. Um, mm. which is a bit shit, but you know, what can you do? Yeah. But you know, it's, it's difficult. Mm. Um, but we got to stay creative. And now with the podcast, the podcast is also another way that we've been staying very creative. Yeah. Um, Cause we've got to, I, we find content each week and things like yeah, that. Yeah. So. Which is a lot harder now that we're not like going <laughs> yeah. out and, and doing things. But, um, yeah. I guess it also kind of gives us an opportunity to talk about different things and new things that aren't mm. directly related to our lives. It's like just, it's a part of our lives, but it's not, it's not everything that we do. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, it's gonna it's definitely gonna be an interesting time. Um, for sure, it's been, yeah, it's been really really fun. Um, but yeah, we'll 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 come back every week with something creative that we've done. Yeah, um, I think that that's a really really good idea. Um, mm. to keep creative. Um, we should probably wrap it up right about now, shouldn't we? Yeah, probably. Been, we've we've gone over the hour mark, so so we'll stop. Um, this was a really fun episode. I really, this mm. one went really nicely. Um, yeah. It was, it was good. It was fun. Um, so we hope that you are all staying very safe and healthy yes. um, over the next couple of months. Um, it's looking like it's going to take much longer than we thought it did initially. Mm. Um, but stay home as much as you can. Wash your hands. Um, if Joe and I can do our work remotely um, and we can do our podcast remotely over Zoom and we can make it work, um, you don't have to see your friends every two days um, and spend time yes. with them. Um, mm-hmm. do the right thing, stay home, um, and we'll make COVID disappear just like we made Epstein's, uh, cell video disappear. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, <laughs> uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for yeah. watching. Joe, do you have anything you want to say to finish off? Um, no. Catch you later. <laughs> Catch you later. Fantastic. Thank you so see much. See you next week. <laughs> see you next week. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.